And the point of view I have on brushes and all these different things we're going to start doing now as we move forward, <clears throat> they're going to start speaking a little more to sort of the artistic point of view on this stuff. <clears throat> is we're gonna approach it the same way we're doing this, where I really like to start hopefully getting in your head to think about things like edges and brushes and how you're controlling your uh, image making. Does that make sense? So I'm trying to cut off a little bit of the learning curve with you guys to, and I probably said this before, to kind of get your stuff a little more sophisticated. And even if you're not, and I don't expect everybody to hit it in this class, but if I plant that seed, at least you have something you're shooting for and you're aware of, does that make sense? So I'm always trying to look at these things, have, have, having done it for so long, the things that I learned along the way that actually took me a long time to learn, I'm trying to sort of make you aware of those things. Because I think brush control is a huge one. Um, hard, uh, lost and found edges is a huge one. Um, you know, there's just a lot of them like that. And I know it sound, you hear those terms all the time, but I don't think they're talked about enough. In, in, in regards to just design and things like that. Does that make sense? And also, again, all these things matter even if you're a graphic designer, whatever it is, you're still, you know, sometimes a design needs some texture. Sometimes, you know, these things apply to kind of everything. Does that make sense? So I don't want everybody to go like, oh, it's all about digital painting or it's all about illustration or it's all about entertainment design. It's not. All these things apply to everything. It just depends on, it's just like when we've gone over these tools, like, in, and, you know, we're playing around with that picture of that guy and lighting it different and all that stuff. That totally applies to graphic design and things like that, okay? But it also applies if I'm painting, I can take that same technique and go, I'm over here, I want to make that a little more saturated and do this. And I can do that overlay thing and start going in and painting it. And it's the same thing I did on the photograph. So it goes across everything. Does that make sense? Or that's what I'm trying to do, okay? Because I don't want it to be just totally... I, I saw guys, this is interesting, before I was teaching, my ex-girlfriend um, taught over at RCC, right? And anyway, she asked me to come and talk to her class, but I was, I was looking at um, some of the guys who were teaching Photoshop, okay? And they were, one of them, one or two of them were like illustrators and were kind of fanboys a little bit, not total fanboys, but kind of fanboys. And they were this was a basic intro. It wasn't like this. It wasn't written for artists this way. It was like a standard Photoshop class. And these guys jumped right into really what they liked, which was like advanced um, illustration and stuff. And most of their class wasn't even illustrators. So all these people were just like, I don't, I'm not, I'm not an illustrator. And you're, and you're, you're kind of teaching the class from perspective that everybody already has an illustration background. Everybody already has a certain amount of um, sophistication and all that. And then you're, and then half of them aren't even, or more than half of them are not even illustrators. You know what I mean? And it's like, you can't, to me, I try not to teach it just from my perspective, what I like. I try and teach it where it's very broad. Does that make sense? And the only reason I explain this stuff all the time is I just want you to know my point of view and where I'm going. Okay. And I also don't want people to go, because I've gotten this before. People go, I don't know how to draw, I don't know how to paint. It's like, you don't need to in here. I set it up so you don't need to. If you do, then you can go a little further with it. Does that make sense? And I also expect you to sort of whatever you do, sort of look at it and go, how can I apply that? Don't think when we're doing next week, we'll do this kind of planetary thing. It's not about that. It's about starting to learn about edges and smudging and how the tools do a lot of the work for you, just like with in the, in the real world. Okay. When I'm doing the plain air class right now, one of the things I'm teaching them is like, let the brushes and stuff do your work. Let the opacity of the paint do your work. Let the technique, the dry brush, whatever it is, let it do the work, just like this is. That's It's the same thing. Does that make sense? Except here, you can layer things any way you want, which makes it a hell of a lot easier. And the other thing you got to think about, by the way, if you're digital painting, you're painting with light here. That's the opposite of how you're painting in the real world, which is reflective. It's a reflective surface that's bouncing light, correct? Okay, so you can do things obviously digitally, like with intensity of color and things like that. You really can't do with traditional paint, all right? Which is a good thing. All right, where are you at, Ashley? Yes, I'm here. Okay, so that's not bad. Yeah, it was really hard doing the channeling. Like, I had to I had to like zoom in on everything and. I try to using the clone stamp to like um, to make it seem like it's not like a choppy work. <laughs> it's really hard. Yeah. Okay. So here. Okay. So you did you channel mask her? Yes, I did. What kind of background was she in? Was it complicated? <laughs> yeah. There was. If you see on the original, I I put it as um. Oh, there it if is. If you click on yeah, like um, 
their background is like super light and it's like still super blurry that's not and too like, bad yeah it's not too bad but like it's not um, ideal but it's not yeah. too bad yeah and like and i tried channeling it by using, the other thing the um, other thing with this by the way is that it's um hang on <laughs> you might have a little it says it's 42 let's see oh it's pretty big okay yeah, I think you probably could get in there and mask that pretty good. But there's other things here, and that's what I was talking about here a second ago, mm -hmm. where I might come in here. Let's, I'm just going to make this. Um, I'm sorry I'm late, Mike. I had a doctor's appointment. Okay, that's fine. I won't mark you late. Oh, God, I can't hear anything. Hang on a sec. Ah, oh, shoot. All right. Okay, um, let me see. I'm gonna I'm gonna put a layer above this and try. I'm just gonna experiment here for a second. Okay, so one thing I might do, and I think I'm gonna put these up today because um, they're pretty straightforward. I'm gonna talk about them much more next week, but I think at this point, I think we could use them. Sometimes I'll come in here with different smudge tools. And I talked about this a little, but not really. And I might just come in here. Oops, wrong thing. I'm going to pick this one first. And see if I can... And I have to figure out which one is going to work for me. And I might break up this edge a little bit. And I might just start with something like that to start to soften up. Now, what this brush does, so let's put this here. This will kind of tell you the difference between these things. Let me put a color in there. So if I put this big, okay, what happened here? Oh, that's one. Hang on. Okay, so I'm on my smudge tool. And there's kind of how it breaks things up. You can see it. Okay. So if I go in here big, this will start to show you how this breaks this up. So it breaks it up like that, okay? I like that a lot. We're gonna talk about it much more next week. I use a lot. I use this one a lot. I, I probably mostly use two, that's it, okay? So that one does that. So what I wanna do is here is I wanna have a variety of edges I can screw around with. So I got them all in here. I got drawing here. And here's my smudge right here, okay? Let's get rid of this. Uh, this one doesn't count. Uh, just add water. It's just going to do really soft sort of watercolory edges. Okay. Um, bristle blend. I don't know. I don't even remember what this one does. You have to go big to see what they do big. There we go. It's kind of a nice edge. Uh, bristle blend straight. Now also... I don't use them like that most of the time. I use them, you know, depending on how big they are, I can get a much different effect here and I can control it a little more. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, let's go through a couple more because I'm going to give you all these. I'll put them up today. You're going to need them next week anyway. Uh, here's a directional blend. Let's go big again. Just a nice soft edge. So you can use the brushes with the blending tool, not just the brush tool? This is the blending tool. If you see right here, you see that little finger? Yeah. That just is indicating it's a smudge tool. It's just like taking your finger and smudging and, something. And you can use brushes for the smudge tool? Mm hmm That's crazy. But I mean, these are all these are all designed for this. It's a, it's a pack. Oh, it actually, originally, so cool. it was like nine. It's its own tools, but the, you adjust them just like a brush. Um, and then there's some that are built into Photoshop, but I like these, but I, and again, I probably use two of them. I use that impressionistic blender a lot. And by the way, there's a native one in Photoshop that does, it's basically the same blender. 
but this pack I really like. Like this one is hard dapple. I like this a lot. It'll give me a really nice sort of watercolor edge, right? This one, noisy smudge. That's kind of nice. Uh, painterly blend. Let's go. Big. That's really nice. There's one in here called uh, Pebbled Blend is nice. This will also give you sort of a watercolory, uh, gouache kind of edge. Scratchy, I use this once in a while. So this literally will just pull them out like that, which actually comes in handy once in a while. I usually have to manipulate it afterwards, but that's fine. And then whatever this one is, nice smudge. Okay. So that's basically what they do. We'll, we'll really talk more about how they, what to, we're going to do with them next week. But I might come in here like that last one. Go back on here and then go really small. Because if I do it really small, you're not going to really see it that much. But I need to soften this up. Now, I don't want it too blurry. That's a little too blurry for me. So I'm going to try... Maybe a little bit more like that, where I'm just going to pull some of these out. That's a little too much right there. I'm going to pull some of these out here and there and, and uh, soften them, right? So I'm going to soften that edge a little bit and pull a little bit over the background. Does that make sense? Yeah. You know, and I can do it sort of in a stylistic way a little bit too. It just depends on what I've seen. That's a little too much. If you got a pressure sensitive pad, it's going to help you a lot because I got to control how much of this I'm doing. And then there's usually one in here that's a native um, Photoshop one where I might just, it's like, it just, it literally is just like I'm going to finger or brush or something and pulling it out. And sometimes I'll pull out a couple of individual hairs here and there. Does that make sense? And by the way, I think we, I don't know if we talked about this. I think we did. If you look at these tools, you see right here, it has that finger, right? That means it's a smudge brush and that's it. That means you can't assign something else to it. You can't assign an eraser to it or stuff like that. Okay. And you'll see that throughout all these brushes. They all like, this is a brush. I can't assign it to anything else. This is a pencil. You know, these are assigned to something that usually means they're fairly complex brushes that have been designed to do a certain thing. Okay. Um, I'm going to give you this set too, which is all my ink brushes. It also has these watercolor washes down here. Uh, ink washes, watercolor washes, all that stuff. I'll give you my grep brushes or group brushes, whatever the hell they're called. Um, wait, what is this? And this is the rusty nib. I don't know why I have two of these in here. Um, I have oil yeah, brushes. I have a question. Go ahead. Do you have any um, brushes that like start for their sketch, like sketching brush? The, my favorite one that I have in here, which I'll also give you, is one I actually found on a computer at the campus. And what it is, and we'll talk about this next week, making these, because you can, eventually what you probably should do is just make your own, right? Yeah. It's this one right here. And if you look at, look, okay, so look, I selected this where it says pencil sketch. You see it? Mm -hmm. If you go up here, look what it is. It's actually, they started this brush with a feather silhouette. Does that make sense? Yeah. So... And I like this. It's just got a nice, oops, it's on, see, it's on smudge right now. Let's see what we can do with that. <laughs> Hang on. It's on smudge. It should let me smudge with that. Hang on. If it, let, if it shows it, it should let me do it. Yeah, it is. So this, I might come in here and just pull out a few. I'd have to get it stronger. See, the strength isn't high enough. So I want to pull it out a little bit. Yeah, a little more like that. And I'm only going to do that here and there. Okay, I don't want to overdo that because I don't want to show little individual hairs everywhere. I want to show them here and there and soften other areas. Does that make sense? Yes. So that hey, one Mike, looks pretty good. Yeah. Uh, do you ever group the uh, smudge brushes by um, like use or, or do you arrange the panels? Yes. When I'm, if I'm more, and well, I don't really hear because if you look in my brush palette, I have my drawing stuff. These are basically, it says drawing, but these are basically like brushes I like that I use quite a bit just in general. And then I have um, down here, I have my general brushes, which, which is what comes with uh, Photoshop. And then I have 
I don't know why I have two of everything. I'm not sure what's going on there. And then I have all my, all my smudge brushes in one folder. And this is all I use for smudge. I don't even use all these, but that's it. That's all I need. Okay. And then I go into sets that I bought. These are the rusty nib sets, which are all ink brushes and watercolor brushes. Then my group brushes, which are reactive brushes, which we'll talk about more next week. There's my smudge or a rusty nib again. I don't know why it's there. And then these are oil brushes. So these have a much more kind of oily oh, kind of that. look to them. Much more painterly. Okay. So I'll give you all those two. Um, you're going to have to sort through them because it's a lot of brushes. This is really nice. But this one we we're just talking about up here, like this probably would be a nice sketching brush probably i don't like it that much um here this brush i like this brush it's got a nice um hang on it's got a nice thin thick thing there you see that yeah that's pretty cool who was asking me about this ashley was that you uh, no, it's Issei. Um, oh, okay. I just had a question. Uh, so can you custom make them and put them into packs like that? What do you mean packs? Like, let's say I, I like this brush, but I want to set them at different widths or something, but I want them all together, like a sketching pack per brush. Can I do that too? Or Well, you can just put them in folders. Oh, just folders. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks. But, and, and then the other thing you can do is you can export them. We'll talk about that next week. You can export them as, I think they're ABR files. Uh, are you talking about selling them or what? No, I'm just, I'm always really messy and I always forget where I, you know, so I don't want to have to scroll through every smudge. No, every you, that, that's why you put them in folders. Yeah, because that would drive me crazy. Okay. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I used to do that. Actually, to be honest, Photoshop only a few years ago made this easy to do. It actually used to be a huge hassle to organize your brushes. And now it's super easy. We'll talk about it more next week, but it's really easy. We just make a folder. What I usually do too is if I'm working on, and we're going to talk about this more next week, but if I'm working on a project, like an illustration, and, and I might've said this, but if I, let's say that I'm working on an illustration and it's got a lot of foliage in it, okay? I might make a full few foliage brushes um, based on the styling of the illustration I'm doing so I can speed it up. I'm probably going to take some, like if I painted some leaves in there, I'll probably take those and I'll make a brush out of it, an art brush out of it where I can spray those leaves around and then, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, and what I'll do on that project is I might just make another little folder that's just those special brushes I made for that project. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's great. That's awesome. Okay. And then what I might do is I go, well, I'm not going to need these on everything because they have a, a certain stylistic point of view. So they're not going to really work with everything I'm doing. Then I can export them as a group and just put them in a folder and just go, you know, mark them however it is that, we're, you know, because you might want to use them again. And then you can just reactivate them back into Photoshop if you want to use them. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. Or if you get really good at it, sell them as a pack. I mean, a lot of people do that. They sell these things. Like, I mean, a lot of these brushes, by the way, these are a little more expensive, the ones that I'm going to give you guys, but a lot of them are really reasonable they're like five dollars for a pack and i used to be really weird about like i just make my own brushes but it's like why i mean these all these oil brushes are great it's really what i do with them and it's like it's kind of like saying it's like kind of like saying if i go buy a bristle brush i should go make my own bristle brush so it makes its own marks and it's like that's not how it works does that make sense mike for that brush can you um change the presser the pressure sensitive yeah, yeah this one is pressure sensitive yeah yeah. But if I do it like, look, if I do it with a mouse, it's not going to give me that. Okay. If I do it with my stylus, I can start very light. Get nice and thick and thin. Does that make sense? That's really cool. Oh, yeah. I'll show you how to make them. It's not hard at all, actually. Um, and then... So this one's got a nice feel to it. So one I use for all my just like general sketching stuff, right? And I can get nice, thin, thick lines. Blah, 
blah, blah, blah. Okay. Does that all make sense? Yeah. Okay. So what I did just now is I assigned that brush right there and it won't work with every brush, but I assigned that brush right there to that tool. So I, I can pull out a few of these if I want to do that. And I, again, I don't want to overdo that. I want to have some softening of this. And I could also, and I, I want to be careful though, because like if I come in here and I go, I'm going to use my, uh, where is it? My blur tool here, which I could use a little. I don't want everything to get blurry. So it's this sort of, I got to play around with everything just to break that edge and kind of keep an eye on what I'm doing. It's, I'd probably do more of it with a little bit of smudge brushy stuff because I don't want everything to become blurry. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. How'd you find a picture of her looking up? Actually, I, I don't know. Like I was just on Google and I just looked up her name and then I just kept on scrolling. And you know, on the on Google, there's um, tools and you look and then you can um, find how big you want your yeah. image. Yeah, and then I clicked on that and that was like probably uh, like a few scrolls down and then I clicked on each of them. And it says it was like, a, the picture size was like a thousand over and something. And I was like, okay, maybe that's, and it's perfect too, because she's looking up and yeah, I can just her head. And it's a big image. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, it's perfect. Where'd you get the grass? <clears throat> on google <laughs> yeah, I, just looked up, I just looked up grass and then that was a prop and i changed the um the hue it was like bright green okay great that's what i want you to do yeah so right now you're you're thing you know and another thing and this is just painter stuff like down here oops sorry I screwed up down here And it's just a little simple trick to do. Let's see if I can find it. Let's get this. We can adjust it. By the way, I don't obsess over what color I throw down because I can adjust it. Does that make sense? Yes. There we go. When it <clears throat> in the sky towards the horizon, even if it's not, and I'm going to knock this down so it's not so strong. In the sky, let's see if, I don't know if an overlay will do me any good here, but let's just try it. So I'm just gonna try it real quick. By the way, the shortcut, and this is kind of a weird shortcut to go through your layers is you have to be on the move tool, which I am. And then, you know, I click here and then I can go shift and plus or minus and it'll go through the, it'll scroll through them. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Kind of a weird, you have to be on the move tool to do it. I don't know why. Hey, Mike, have you ever um, like repositioned like in a portrait or something, the eyeballs and like, oh, yeah, the design or something? Uh huh. Oh, okay. Like, you know, if you wanted to make the eyeballs, you, you could do that and just, oh, yeah, put, like some kind of lazy look on it. Sure. Oh, okay. or I could push them up further up so she's looking even more up. Right. Okay. So if you notice, all I did is subtly warm up the horizon. Okay. Um, the reason I did that <clears throat> is as the sky goes down towards the horizon, it tends to get dirtier, warmer, and lighter. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. Um, and, and the reason I'm also doing that is I'm trying to get color and cool stuff in there. This is very subtle, but it's, it, it, it throws a warm into all this cool. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. If it doesn't, tell me and I'll explain it. Mike, is there any other way of like light control? Like, you know, when we're talking about um, moving their eyeballs around or something, but if you wanted to change the light direction, like a, like if you had a spotlight coming from the foreground or something and you were shining it forward, um, is there a way of like lighting, you know, the grass, her eyes, her forehead by changing the position of the light from just an atmospheric? Um, uh, yeah, but you'd have to start probably doing a lot of, I'd have to knock this down if I want to change the light direction. So I'd have to subtly pull some things over there and then I'd have to light the other side. Oh. Um, but I, first thing I'd have to do is sort of get the lighting neutral and then I'd pull in the, the light from another direction or something like that. Does that make sense? Oh, okay. Okay. Well, you know, a friend of mine was showing it and 
they do it in animation where you can just change the light like on a 3D object. That's different. Is there, oh, is that different? Okay, I, yeah. I didn't know how they were okay, doing so it. So when you're talking about it, and we're gonna do some 3D stuff probably the following week, and we will light it and stuff. Um, when you create a 3D object, you're creating the whole environment. So that object's like literally, you know, you can move it around and then I can set the light source because I'm controlling that whole environment. Once I take a picture, it's a flat 2D image. And now I don't have any of those options. Now there's certain tricks. Oh, I see. Okay. There's certain tricks okay. you can do, yeah. but you know, you're gonna have to do a little work to make that work. Okay. Okay. All righty. Yeah. Um, and you know, even here, if I add a little bit of that, then maybe I would I might add a little into the hair. And I'm gonna show you a trick for that next week also. Um which is a lot of these things now are just pretty simple. It's just a matter of putting them together correctly. Okay. Um, okay. Ashley. Yes. Any questions? No, actually, thank you so much. What's your major? Um, I'm actually doing graphic designing oh, and good. at LCAD. Oh, okay. Yeah. How do you like it over there? It's super tiring, like nonstop working, and sketching, no That's sleep. It <laughs> That's exactly what it should be. You should be exhausted. Yeah, <laughs> you don't have time to do anything. That's good. That's really good, actually. I'm glad to hear that. Because I don't really know much about the program. I've been over there once or twice, but uh, and it looked pretty good to me. And then I hear other stuff, but then I'm hearing that from instructors and sometimes instructors are all bitching and you know what I mean? It's like, I don't know. Oh yeah, that, that's so true. Like they the want, it's it's like, it depends on which professor you get. Like you get the good ones or the fun ones and the other ones, they're really like strict and like they get angry at you for no reason sometimes because they're so tired. <laughs> you know, I think there's also, to be honest with you, I think there's also an attitude because I've seen it like art centers, the big ruler of the world in that world. You know what I mean? Yeah, I get you. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, is that there's a reputation at Art Center for being really hard ass. <clears throat> and everybody's been to Art Center, like me included. I think I've talked about it in here. It's like some of the teachers would, you know, pretty crazy. And I think that there's a lot of teachers, and I've even seen it at Art Center. There's a lot of teachers that go, oh, I'm going to be one of those hard ass guys like Hogarth or Roland Young. Or, and it's like, that ain't you. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Hogarth's allowed to do that because he's Bern Hogarth. Roland Young's allowed to do that because he's Roland Young. And there was a lot of teachers there who were nurturing and very kind, stern, or not stern, but, you know, were really honest with you about your work and everything, but didn't use that approach at all and were very constructive. And But I think a lot of people take that away and think that that's the way to be. Like, it's that's some cool thing to do as a teacher. And it's like, that's just those guys' personality. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't blame them, honestly. I, I don't blame, I, I think if they, I, I had no problem with those teachers doing that. They, they scared the shit out of me and it actually motivated me because I was scared to death of those guys. I was scared to death of Rolling Young, okay? I was scared to death of that guy. And um, I did not want to put lousy work up on the wall because man, would he let you have it. You know what I mean? Yes. And yeah. the thing that really sucked about it is he had a huge background and when he tore you apart, it was all correct. Like you couldn't sit there and go, screw him, man. He's just picking on me. It was like, he was totally right. You know what I mean? Yeah, he, he's basically like pushing you harder so you can be a, become a better um, artist. Yeah, what I heard is because I was talking to somebody because I had him first term and the, the class was an all day crit. It went from like nine in the morning till four. OK, it's brutal. Yeah, it is definitely brutal. Like um, I had two classes, 10. It starts at 10 a.m., the 2 p.m. and the 4 p.m. to 10, 10 p.m. Yeah, in day. it's really bad. That's <laughs> good. I'm glad to hear that. I didn't know that. I, I think that's what it should be. I think college when you go to college or something it should be boot camp. You know what I mean? yeah, it feels like a boot camp every day. Who is, I, there's a girl on my Instagram called uh, Happily Ever Arts. Do you know who that is? No, I don't actually. She just graduated there. I'm just curious. She seems like a nice kid. She, I think she started following me or something. I can't remember, but she pops up on my Instagram. And I know mm -hmm. she just graduated and she seems like a nice kid. Okay, so all that makes sense, yeah? Yes, thank you. I want to give you guys my smudge tools. Um, <clears throat> just because we're going to start talking about it next week anyway and i think they're pretty simple i mean as far as just using them they're simple where's casey i'm here okay so we're comping yeah yeah i'm comping um obviously not done i'm just gathering different assets okay one thing you I, might want to do yes. like you did here where you just yes. half-ass cut it out that way you get this half-ass cut out yeah this makes it a little easier for you and i just do it either with the object selection tool or i just do a real half-ass 
whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. You yeah. Still yeah, got yeah. Allergies? Uh, yeah. It's it's okay. I'm fine. <clears throat> In other words, uh, stop asking me. <laughs> um. Uh. Shoot. I was gonna ask you. So. I have like several. I obviously I only want one cat, and the oh, make the font bigger. Okay. I would. Think. Oh, okay. Ahead. Um, I selected multiple cats, and I don't know. I just wanted to hear people's feedback on which one they think would work best with the background. So my my thoughts are, I'm gonna comp everything together. Oh, sorry, I put it as a folder. There's multiple. This drives me crazy choose. about that. This why I don't uh, like. Um, I'm not a big fan of groups. Oh, I love groups. I know, and it's fine. It, it, everybody works differently. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just, I don't like yeah. the way it grabs everything at the same. And all. I just don't like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, it depends on the composition, right? Yeah, but also, like, I really like the lighting on the cat that's all the way in the front and the foreground, the bottom left cat. It kind of, like, matches the, the Star Knight. Uh, yeah, 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 that one. I like that as an overall pose a lot. Oh, okay, okay, okay. But I, I don't know. I also like the angle of the head on the one in the back. Yeah, that one. I like this a lot too. I mean, it, again, it just it's going to matter about the composition. Okay. It's really. I mean, this right here you could use almost interchangeably with that. But the good thing about this one is if you need more body on them, you've got it. Yeah, that's true. It just okay. depends on how you transition it, right? This okay. one here is one I always go to. Hang on. I always love. This is what I was talking about yesterday. Oh, how he incorporated the okay here's the you know the landscapey thing thing and then very designed smoke leads up into this big unit yeah. and this character and then here's the edge like we were talking about yesterday see how he always does something cool with the edges yeah you don't always oh. have to do that you don't always have to do that but that you can do very easily with a layer mask or a okay. uh, mask right yeah yeah but all i'm saying here is like it has nothing to do with your layout just the way he's designing these montages yeah i mean he was really i mean he's always the guy that i go back to for this because he just kind of like here's another one i love the way he used the rain as a design element and he flared it out like as a triangular design so it has all this like dynamism as it comes down yeah yeah um, and then if you look here, look, the smoke is designed. See that? Yeah. I just love all that stuff. And I know we're using assets, but you know, you can always go in and tweak things. Um, this kind of effect of the glow light is kind of fun. Um, you know, anyway, he's the guy to me to look at to go just to get inspired. The uh, also his. Uh, oh, he did Harry Potter. Oh, he does. He every giant movie he's done. What? If there's an iconic okay. movie for a uh, poster for a movie. He did it. Oh, I had no idea. Oh, okay. And that's hand painted, by the way. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah, I had no idea. So look, right? But very, you know, somebody fucked around with this one, it looks like. Um, so this is his more rendered kind of stuff. Um, and then some of this stuff is super painterly. The problem is you go in here and people are like dicking around with these things. I'm trying to find the original. So that's a close up of the texture and things, right? Does that make sense? By the way, yeah. we can add texture too, huh? Yeah, I didn't I didn't consider the texture part. Yeah, that's a big one, I think. Okay. Mm. Now obviously he's doing this on gesso board, so he sets up the texture. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes he takes objects and he and he he swirls through the um gesso lets it dry and then it's it fixes into his design when he starts painting on it okay it okay. looks like that's what he did back here probably but i mean yeah. we can swipe all these ideas into digital right yeah oh i was just concerned because i have a starry background for my movie posters so i was wondering if adding a layer of texture with those stars if it would be like too much or if i should like take out some of the stars if i were I to add show texture. you um We'll talk about when you get to the stars part. Tell me, and I'll show you some ways to do that. Okay. 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 It's really simple, by the way. Okay. But um, we'll use yeah. Anyway, so I, anyway, I just think he's a great guy to look at. And then these, you get close-ups on these. These are really textural and really painterly. I can't see it. 
does he have sketchbooks out there where he shows his process like uh, yeah i have one well if you look here this is mind-blowing by the way <clears throat> so these are his comps <coughs> these are his comps okay um, right they're done on canson paper and then these are also comps i mean they almost look finished yeah okay um and i don't know if i told you guys this but these used to be that's a these are comps so you can go in here and look at his comps and he has a lot of his um tonal sketches in here like this that's how he starts them okay wow oh my god yeah uh i had a teacher named jim Silvati, really great painter illustrator i don't know if i ever said this but anyway he um he was young and cocky because I was super cocky. He got a chance to go in and, and be in the running for a movie poster, which is just like the Holy Grail, especially back then. Right. And he's all, he said he was all cocky and everything. And he go, and I guess when they went in the room, they had all these things on easels and stuff, you know, everybody's presenting or something. I can't remember the whole story, but, um, and he goes in there with his comps, he walks in this room and like there's Struzans in there. There's like all these major illustration gods that are in there. And he said, he walked in there and he almost crapped his pants. Like, I am not ready for this. Like I did not. I ne it's. I have to put my stuff up. But holy shit, is this embarrassing? You know what I mean? Yeah. Because they were like at this level, you know. And he's like, I didn't put that much time in any of this shit. You know what I mean? Because oh. I, didn't, I didn't realize, you know. And plus, I mean, this is monster talent. You know what I mean? Like if I was going into a room, Drew Struzan, man, I'd spend a shit ton of time on it. And I'd also assume like I ain't gonna get the job. Drew Struzan's gonna get the job. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, if I was competing with him. Anyway, there's a lot of his um, black and white studies in here. Where'd it go? These are really good. Okay. You know, and now a lot of this, well, not with this kind of thing, but now a lot of this, you know, people's comping is done in Photoshop and stuff, right? Yeah. And I don't know that, you know, I don't know how many people are even doing this kind of work right now. There are a few guys. There's a guy named, um, if you care about this. I thought you were going to type in your own name for a second because it started with Mike. No, that's, <laughs> that's a little too arrogant. <laughs> I mean, if I have a, 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 uh, an example of something I did, that's fine. This guy, Mike Butkus, monster guy, he's still doing hand-painted stuff. See that? Oh, wow. Yeah. The weird thing about this, though, is like I see these things and I go, well, I don't see these posters anywhere, though. But I don't I'm not really paying attention to that either. I'm not really in movie theaters either. So that's probably why. Mm. But if you look at his drawing. Which I always am pushing. I know I go down these tangents. I'm sorry. But um, oops, I don't want that. Let's go here. This guy, he loves a lot of techniques that I love. So really great draftsmanship skill set right look at that these are all um prisma marker gouache on usually on duralar or duraline man or that's okay it's in a sketchbook really fun guy to look at his work he's just always doing really fun stuff A lot of sketchbook stuff. If you want to look at his sketchbook stuff, there's a lot of it's out there. Okay. I think uh, just go to his Instagram or whatever. <clears throat> but he posts a lot of his process, this guy. There's another one. Usually it's oh, like wow. pencil, prisma, white gouache, maybe some watercolor, maybe usually marker, that kind of thing. Okay. And he's always showing his comps and stuff like that, which is really cool. It's really helpful, I think, for uh, it's really good to gauge yourself, you know, um, to gauge where you're at. You know, because I look yeah. at those guys. I think you should look at that guy and go, screw him. I'm going to be better than him. I don't think you should look at him and go, I'm going to be as good as him. I think you should go and kick his ass. In my opinion. Okay. Does that make sense? I, I think you yes. could use either one of these as long as this one can go big enough. Which looks like it can. By the way, if I go option command. Wait, let me see. 
can. Oh. Hang on a sec. Option command zero. It should give me the actual size of this document. Okay. Okay. So if you create something, like I created a big banner for a, an event for my girlfriend's restaurant, right? And it was a big digital painting. I did it at, I think, 75% of scale at 300 DPI, I think. And I did it, I did it ratioed. So I knew I could blow you it were up. Lagging. And I, it was like, I'm lagging. Oh yeah, you, yeah. Sorry, you cut out. Could you explain from, you said that you're doing something for your girlfriend's restaurant. Yeah. And then that's okay. the last part we heard. Okay. Yeah, so I did it, I did it 75% of scale. Okay. So I was going to blow it up to something like nine or 10 feet wide. Right. And I don't remember what the ratio was, but the document I worked on, the painting size I worked on was at, I think 300. And I, I did it like, let's say 10 inches by 24 inches, right? And because I knew once I, I, you know, I can work at that scale, but I can blow it up. Like the actual document size is 10 by 24 or whatever it was, but I can blow that up to 10 feet or nine feet or whatever it was. And it came out great, right? So um, sort of your document size and the actual size you can go up to is, is controlled by the, your DPI, right? <laughs> So if I go 600 DPI, I can go higher, right? 300 is the base and the usual um, DPI for something printed, okay? If it's gonna go online, doesn't need to be 300. You know, you size it at, at 72 and that's it, okay? All right, does that make sense? What other questions you have? Yeah, that was my only question. And then I just have like a freebie tip for everybody. If you want really nice high res, like nighttime sky images, if you go to NASA's website, they have a ton of images that they've taken with their teles telescopes, like really nice, high quality. That's a great idea. Uh, images. That's a great idea. NASA's great. If you're doing like sci-fi stuff, <clears throat> just go and pull all that weird random shit that NASA puts up of like just random shots of like the space station. Like not the ones where they're showing it for like, you can tell that they're sort of a publicity shot or whatever, whatever. Um, just the weird random stuff they show where it's like, here's two astronauts working outside or whatever. And you see the stuff in the background, you're like super cool stuff to pull from. You know what I mean? And I always think it's better to, um, to pull from uh, the headwaters, the reality and then bend it to your needs, right? I, I don't go to somebody else's work, which is what the, the, the problem I see constantly is. Oh, I like Star Wars. Hey, we're doing futuristic vehicle. Okay, I'm gonna go rip off Star Wars stuff. It's like, good luck getting a job. You know what I mean? And by the way, it's, it's, that's one of the only ways that I know of that you can get that stuff washed out of your brain a little bit is if you go to the headwaters of something and go, okay, this is sort of similar, you know, and you pull a lot of reference and all that kind of stuff and you start putting together your own ideas because I understand it's very hard to do something unique right now because it's just like, you're so inundated right now with absolutely amazing images from all these different movies and all these different, whatever, comic books and all this entertainment. And there's so much of it. And it, it feels probably like that world is so defined, it's hard to do anything new. Does that make sense? But it's not because ideas are free and they're endless. Okay. Right here. Okay. Now here's my problem with this. What's going to be in the background? Um, a flag. My problem with it is, is just going to come where it's like, okay, take the object selection tool, take this guy, paste him on a flag. Does that make sense? Oh yeah. I see. You want more than just that. Yeah. Yeah. Like maybe, I don't know. I want a little more work in there. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Um, and also, I want to, I think it should say something. Like, if he's the anti Captain America, why is he in front of an American flag? Right? Yeah. You know, shouldn't the flag be on fire or something? You know, I don't know. Something that speaks to this whole thing. Does that make sense? Yeah, I could do something with that. Maybe like. Okay. So just give me a little more narrative. Does that make sense? Mm, that makes sense. Okay. You're getting closer, though. It's not, it's not as just static as it was before. Yeah. Where's Julio? I'm right here, Mike. Okay, so now what we're getting is sort of this piecemeal idea. And the way I always describe this is it's starting to feel a little bit like you took a handful of stuff and threw it at the canvas, right? Okay. So, and also you're looking at this, nothing's tying together. And when I first look at this like that, I don't, I don't know what I'm looking at. Does that make sense? Okay. It's got to have a strong first, second, third read. 
Mm, okay. okay. So you got to pull me in. You know, if I, I, I bet you I could find a lot of images online of people. It's usually a, a, for some reason, a blacksmith or something, sometimes glass blowers. Um, you know, they got that light from the furnace or whatever that thing's called, uh, you know, lighting them up. And, you know, there's just a lot of cool stuff you can do with that. But you got to be careful when you have sort of like a small object, a small object, kind of a small object, like, and they're just sort of floating around and they're not connected. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. Like, think about your size relationships. You don't want everything to be the same size. You want to have a big central image, probably. And then whatever is kind of around that. Does that make sense? So like uh, one of the the side ones make it bigger? Is, is that uh, what you're saying? I don't know. Um, I think it's got to have a central image because like I don't know what this is right here. Does that make sense? Okay. I, now that's probably something specific to somebody who glass blows would probably know that. Okay. Right? I'm assuming yeah. it's a tube with a blob of glass on the end of it, right? Yes. Okay. Most people don't know much about that. Yes, it's in a, it's in a Very furnace. specific art form. You know what I mean? It is. Okay. I'm a, I, I'd be terrified of it because I'd be afraid I inhale and burn my lungs up. <laughs> and trust me, I would. Um, yeah, so something has to become a central image. And also, you know, I want it to be, oops, I want it to be a compelling image. Okay. But there's probably plenty of compelling images of um, this kind of thing, right? And then this kind of thing too, I'm probably going to, I would probably, you know, do figure this out. And then I'd also want, I'd probably build some texture into this. That world just feels very craftsmanship, hands-on, shoppy, um, all that kind of stuff. Smoky texture. You know what I mean? Texture. Okay. I mean, I, that, that's just my opinion, right? I, understand. I, I have some, uh, I gave, I think I gave you guys, did I give, give you guys my um, textures? No. Okay, I'll probably give you guys that too. I think I did actually. Does anybody know? No, I don't remember getting them. We only got your fonts. Oh, okay. When did we get fonts? Uh, we okay. just got it today. Where? Everything's under announcements, always. That's where I put everything, okay? And it's under today's announcements, not yesterday's. Yes. So I, I haven't even point. put the zoom up yet, but I wanted to get that up there this morning. So you guys had those. Um, I'm going to put my smudge brushes up there, I think, too. And you don't have to worry too much about the smudge brushes. I'm just going to give them to you because I just talked about them a little bit. Um, next week, I'm going to give you all my brushes. I don't want to dump those yet because people start to get obsessed with brushes. Um, and I want you to focus on this for now. Um, and then I think I'll put, I'll try and find all my textures. I mean, you can make textures. It's super easy, but I'll give you mine too. Does that make sense? Okay. So just, you got to put it together in a, in a, in like this. You know, needs to have a, a more of a, a place, right? I think I'd find a, a, not such a saturated color. Be very aware of your color. Yeah. Okay. One of the ones, and I know this is a painting. Let me see if I have it. Yeah, this is a painting, but you know, it's a really good example of warm cool. Okay. And if you notice with this, you know, you see this all the time. Why do they use warm cool all the time? Look at it. It pops like crazy, right? Does that make sense? Yes. And when you're talking about something that has a furnace in it, something with a warm um, uh, light, I'm going to think like, where, can I use a, a cool in here? You know what I mean? Mm. And then if you look at his cool, it's very desaturated. Right? So it's not a screaming blue. And if you go in here and you eye drop it, that's a pretty neutralized blue. Does that make sense? Okay. So I, what I'm saying is you got to be really careful with how saturated your colors are. You know, really dial them in, whatever you think it should be. Sometimes they do need to be saturated. I get it. Right? Um, but... When I'm just talking about, like, if you're talking about something with a furnace in it or whatever that's considered, uh, you really got an opportunity to do some nice, cool stuff to really pop it. Does that make sense? Okay. All and right. I know this is kind of a fantastic version of it, but the other thing I like, I don't know if I have it. It's by the same guy. I was using it for something else. Hang on. Oh, here. The thing I like about this one 
is how he did all this warm up here. And then his cool down here is very specific to that kind of screen light. Like it's a real neutralized, very specific kind of light. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Okay. Okay. I just like the way he hit that specificity of it. I just think that's cool. And then over here, if you notice, it goes much bluer, right? Which is just cool. Just it's cool looking. It pushes it away a little bit, but it's kind of like that gross sort of um, fluorescent lighting kind of. It's sort of a gray blue, sometimes a little green, whatever. Okay. okay, does that all make sense? Yes, I understand. Okay, good. Thank you. Hey, Mike, on that last picture, uh -huh. is the issue like the perspective, how the buildings kind of like look like they're swirling around? Is in which one? This one? No, the last one. The oh, last, the last one. one. Showed. Is, the is it that you don't notice it so much because he has those soft edges in it? This here? Yeah, so you don't like which way is the building's going? You know, it's kind of like curving. Building. Yeah. That but way. Because he's got the, it's softened up. And he's got it kind of like really super backlit. Well, this kind of painting is really relying on indication. Okay. So he's really not defining anything. If you go in here, I mean, it's very, and it looks like he started with a lot of texture from photos. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? Yeah. And then look, like, like you can tell right here, this looks like it started with some sort of photo. Then he painted over it. And then you can really tell here it's painted. And then this is partly photo. Does that make sense? Yeah, because it looks like cranes or something that he's got. He's just making up futuristic yeah. architecture. Uh -huh, they're just spaces. Okay. It's actually, that's part of the reason why, to me, this isn't that. I mean, he's doing it very well. I'm not knocking it. But it's not that hard to do. You can sort of like go off the deep end and start to indicate a lot of things. And then when you pull out of it, it really has the right vibe and everything. You know what I mean? But if you're going to hand this off to the model department, they'd be like, "Where? Uh huh? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they'd be like how in the hell am I going to model this like where's the structure and then the, you know so you'd have to define it at some point and everything I'm assuming this is either a demo or a first pass for atmosphere big ideas and things like that because you usually work in big to small does that make sense yes uh -huh. just like we talked about in here about working big to small you do the same thing with ideas okay you, you spit out a bunch of stuff it might be like this hey I'm thinking the world kind of looks like this you know there's there's these bars down here and sort of like a modern take on a sports bar or something, but they're watching this and, then, and you have all this like ideas around it. And then whoever you're working with, if it's a movie, the director's going to go, yeah, I like that. But what if we, you know, what's this? And they're going to ask a bunch of questions and they're going to put their own ideas in it. And then these are, would be probably for discussion. Does that make sense? Yes. Uh-huh. Thank you. But really well done and really fun. Look at this. I mean, look at the jumble of stuff there. Right? Where'd everybody go? They're here. Yes. But do you see how you're getting all this abstraction in here? Like I can pull this and go, there's an abstract painting. Yeah. Uh -huh. There's an abstract painting. I always I say, not just go ahead, but I create my own soup. So what you're doing when you start with all these photo textures is you're sort of creating a soup that you can pull things out of. Does that make sense? Yeah. And that's just how I paint anyway. It's not unique to me or anything. Um, I tend to, you know, go in really washy and loose and then I start structuring and pulling things out of that. Okay. So to me, it's sort of two different things. If you're talking about building it in Photoshop or photo bashing, doing all this stuff, it's not painting to me. Does that make sense? Well, it's not, it's not exactly like photo bashing. It's like starting out with like simple uh, shapes and then building right. upon them. Sure. You can do that. Yeah. I mean, that's what I meant that. Like that's what, what I'm does. talking about is getting really painterly and loose and really indicationy. Oh, that... okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, here's where this stuff comes from, if you want to be honest. Also, Mike, for your painting process, do you start with like, uh, you start with like probably like a simple sketch and then do you do like underpaintings or? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I work a lot of different ways. Okay. But one of the, and by the way, there's a video, I'll link it on here. It, it's not really a, a, around this class, but it sort of speaks to what you're asking. Um. There, and there's a million ways I do it. Look, I don't want to go too far down this. I, hopefully everybody doesn't care if I do. I, I think all this stuff's relevant. Is that fine? Yeah, it's great. Oh, okay. Sorry, guys. No, no, no. I, I like this, okay? Because I think when you're talking about Photoshop or anything, you know, and you're talking about an approach field takes, and that's great. Um, I, I think you have to go down the rabbit hole because Photoshop or whatever you're working in needs context. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, good. All right. Like here, 
these are, I do this a million different ways. Okay. This is just something I did for a class. And I'm, I started, let me turn the music off of this thing. Oh, it's already off. I started with this sort of uh, graphite wash. Does that make sense? Yeah. And what I'm doing, this is the soup. So instead of photo bashing, this is my soup. Does that make sense? Yes. Uh-huh. Yes. Okay. So I, I got it washy. I'm going in with this is all graphite. Okay. And then I'm just I just picked a train for no reason. Okay. Actually, what I was talking about here is Matt Mahurin, and I was kind of showing the techniques, sort of what like what he does. Okay. So then I build this whole little under drawing full value in uh graphite. Okay. What paper did you use? That's just in my sketchbook. It's in a moleskin. Okay. So there's that. Okay. And then the reason I set that up is then I could use that as my soup to start this. To start so throwing that, paint over it. So the graphite was basically kind of like your underpainting where you establish like the values. Okay, yeah. It's cool, just, cool, it's cool. a grisaille. Okay. Okay, so now I'm just washing color over it. In my head, I had a little story. Somebody's living in there. That's why the interior's lit up, get it a little rusted up. And then eventually I took it into Photoshop. Most of the time I just finish it here, but I wanted to show them taking it in a digital. I stretched it a little bit. I didn't like it so chubby, so I stretched it out a little bit. Started adding some foreground elements. And if you notice, I've got a lot of texture now because of the way I started this, right? Making mm -hmm. a moon right there. Yeah. Put it over there. And then I'm going to break up. Then I highlighted all those clouds, give it some texture around the edges, and then break up the edges with a clipping mask. Does that make sense? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's sort of, and I do that 50 different ways. Okay. I just need, I like something to start. I also sometimes go this way where I started with, and it's the same technique, actually, where I started with this underdrawing. And again, it's just super loose, right? And I want this to stay loose because I'm just going to get it loose and structure it up. Does that make sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then we're starting to get some value and all that kind of thing on here. Same process, only I'm gonna to go to a different finish. So I got a full value underpainting. I'm gonna block it all out. And by the way, it's the same way I work digitally. Does that make sense? Doing washes over the top, starting to build. But I've got all that value underneath, right? That's really beautiful with the red Conte as like. It's a red, or... uh, it's terracotta Derwent drawing pencil. Oh, sorry. One of yeah. my favorite pencils. Okay, so now see how it's getting much more refined? Yeah. And in this case, I'm going to go pretty refined with it. So I like to show the range that I can go with it. Now I can do this in anything. I can do it in oil, I can do it in mixed media, I can do it in anything. Okay, acrylic. This is mostly acrylic. I'm starting to build the beard. And I think there's this one. And now I change the lighting because this guy, this is a uh, red Volcar. He's a guitar player, right? So I change the lighting, give a little bit of stage lighting back here. I started adding smoke. And then I started, you can see right here, I lit up the side of his face. I made all that up. Okay. That lighting doesn't exist. All right. And then I start pushing in the background. I want to put some smoke back there because he's a honky tonk guitar player. And, you know, there'd be a lot of smoke and all that. So that's that back there. And then I end up somewhere around here. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. Um, but Mike, you could also go the opposite way and just do his body, like the portrait, and then do Photoshop for all the different backgrounds. And sure. then later on, right? Absolutely. That's just a different process of working. Absolutely. OK. Now, this one, this one I didn't take into the computer, right? Then the train okay. one I took into the computer using sort of the same technique, except I started it with a wash graphite underline. The point being here is I like to have a ton of, um, you don't want to be a slave to technique. You want to master technique. Does that make sense? Right. Uh -huh. And the reason is, is I can do all these different things. And, I, and, I'm, and if something pops into my head, I can do it. 
Okay. Cause I have a lot. Of, and by the way, I'm not saying, I don't, I don't think anybody ever masters technique, but you want to get very good at technique. You want to be very fluid between mediums in my opinion. Um, and then, yeah, you can move between digital and traditional. You can, and I love taking that kind of thing. I, you know, start it on traditional and then pull it into Photoshop and trick it out. Very Matt Mahoney, um, or do this kind of thing where it's just a very finished, you know, whatever, you know, um, it's just fun stuff to do. And, you know, I probably got a million examples of it on here. But um, it's another one I did of a student. Same technique, right? And it's the same oh, technique, okay. right? That looks like a YS almost. Wow. Like a what? NCYS. Yes. Oh, I'll take that. <laughs> so again, here we are. We're starting with that. There's the flame. Going in with some watercolor. Now the watercolor won't stick to the surface. There's a lot around that. I'm not going to go into it. Um, I can lift it back out. Then I start getting, and I start building it to um, to a certain level of finish. Okay. I'm doing students' past lives, so I'm just picking students, and then Benton's all into like uh, whatever that's called, Renaissance fairs and all that stuff. And that's the best part is taking the tape off, by the way. Right, and there it is. And then I just put, and then I put type on it in the computer, obviously, right? Mm -hmm. But oh, anyway, that's where that technique for me, that, or the, what we're talking about here, it all that stuff combines into how I approach digital. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. So you want a firm, like art, artist, like stamp on it. Like it's definitely you, you, as opposed to some people like the, the other drive where you're using assets to kind of create something. Yeah. And, and, and look. Up. All yeah. the asset, here's the way I look at using like photo bashing and things like that. Those are totally fine. Once you know all this stuff, what those are are workflow things that can make your workflow go much faster. Totally great. But what I don't like is um, I don't really, uh, I don't like it when people start using those things and they, and they get hung up on those things because they can put something on social media and everybody thinks it's a painting and they get a lot of likes or whatever. And you're like, okay, but you're not really doing anything. I don't know how that's satisfying. Does not make sense to me? And then the other thing I don't think, I think if you're, and I see this constantly, I think if you're just sort of doing all, look, I can go in on YouTube and I can go into any art or not any, but a lot of entertainment design classes or probably illustration classes. And I can just go on there and they're just doing these standard by the book. Here's how you do this um, reduction of value to show men. Here's how you do the lasso tool to make silhouettes. And here's how you use this tool to make this. And here's how you, and you go, that's why it all looks the same. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes, absolutely. And by the way, if you go to any entertainment design program at any school, they all look the same. Okay. Cause they're all doing that shit. And I don't like that. Okay. I think those things are great workflow things to speed up workflow. I think they're great ways of generating ideas. Um, all that stuff is great. What I don't like is then when I see students and I, and I get this, all, that's why I stopped teaching 107. I get them in 107 and they've had all these classes and I go, shit, man, when I ask you just to draw something, you can't do it. You got to use all these tools and all these like tricks and all these techniques. And it's like, that ain't going to build a career, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. You just want, you do? You want them to have foundations. Yes. And what are you going to do? Be having a conversation with an art director and he goes, Hey man, I'm thinking it's like this futuristic castle and there's these flying things that look like this. And you're like, okay, let me run over my computer and get the lasso tool out and start making a bunch of shapes. It's going to be like, man, you're out of here, dude. You should be throwing that down with a pin in front of me right now out of your head. Does that make sense? Yes. That's what I expect. Okay. I don't like tricks. I don't like step-by-step -step crap. I don't like that kind of stuff. Okay. Cause I don't think that serves you well. Okay. Does that make sense? But no, it totally does. Okay, let's look at this guy. Because this to me is the headwaters for what we just talked about. This is um, John Berkey. And he's known for all these crazy space images. Okay. These are all done by hand. Okay. Casing and acrylic. All right. But he's, look at, He's doing the same thing we're talking about with like starting with these textures. If you get close to here, I always talk about this in these classes because this is all what's called brush and scale work. Does that make sense? Yeah. Which means I'm taking a scale and I'm 
create, I'm creating an organic surface over which I'm using a scale to indicate technology. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It's actually very simple. I mean, not his degree, but the idea, okay? And that's sort of where you're getting this sort of photo bashing thing where you're pulling things out of it, except he's not relying on photo bashing, okay? Look, and these things are badass. Right? Yes. Uh, Casey and yeah. acrylic, right? And this guy, and by the way, if you look at this, I love these old guys because they're like, they just look like accountants or something and they're making all this crazy stuff. But they don't look like they'd be doing this kind of stuff. Berkey's a badass, by the way. Did you just say he looks like an accountant? Yeah. <laughs> you just they, These guys never look like crazy artists or anything. They just look like accountants or something, you know, or bankers. <clears throat> But you know, look at this one. Okay, beautiful brushwork. This one's a cool one right here. So to me, what I'm trying to uh, get to, it's hard to see that one. Um, <clears throat> is this a sort of photo bashing before photo bashing in a weird way? Does that make sense? Yeah? Um, no, yeah. I'm not getting it. I'm sorry. Hmm? Go ahead. Um, it's easy. Um, the scope and scale, are you saying um, he gives some indication because, you know, obviously this is a, a, an imaginary, uh, you know, object. Yep. Is it to give it so it looks epic, so the size feels like it's really big and the weight? Absolutely. Okay, so like when we're looking at these tiny, you have to go, oh, that's people size, so this must, this thing must be giant. <clears throat> well, it's so. enormous. Here you have some sense of scale here. <clears throat> some of them are just floating in space, so it's hard to give them a sense of scale other than, you know, um, this one's bitching. I love that. Look at that one. Mm -hmm. It's just the color is really good. Yeah, and and here you can see the brush and scale work in there. You see it? Okay. Right there, right there. I teach this a lot in my Friday class, the brush and scale stuff, this type of technique. But this technique, it's sort of what I just showed you. It's very, you're starting sort of structured but loose, and then you're dancing stuff over it to give an indication of all these things. And it looks very, you know, people do, I probably said this in here before, people look at my sketchbooks all the time and they go, there's so much detail. And it's like, there's no detail in my sketchbooks. Does that make sense? Yes. Or in a painting or what, you know, or like a low plain air painting or something, some detail in those things, but it's indicated to make you think there is. These look very complicated and I'm not saying they're not, but if you break them down and you've done this type of thing, you know how it works. Does that make sense? Yes. And it's big shapes to small, just like we talked about, right? And then you dance all that BS art. I always call it bullshit technology all over it, right? Can I ask you a question, Mike? Do you sure. think he spends um, time first on the, the massing out the big shapes, like compositionally or on perspective? Always massing out the big shapes. Well, okay. you're, you're going to look at them in perspective, you know? Uh -huh. um, and, and if I was going to do something like this, I'd probably just really just give myself a real quick, probably just indication of the box in space real quick. And that's probably all I'd need. Okay. okay. I like to, what I'm trying to get people to do, and this is a whole different discussion, but in my Saturday class, when we go on location and we do all that sketching, I don't let them use grids. I don't let them use vanishing points. I don't let them use any of that stuff. It's like, this is now you've got to start seeing perspective and you got to start being able to draw shit in perspective and throw it down. Does that make sense? A lot of foreshortening. Yeah. And by the way, there's also a time where you do a very detailed perspective drawing. Okay. I don't like people thinking it's one or the other. It's not. But what I'm saying is you need to have both those skills. Does that make sense? If I'm going to sit there in Paris and draw the city or something, I'm not going to sit around and do perspective grids. I'm going to just draw it out of my head. And what I did, you might want to do this. When I was doing this, like in college and stuff, I would draw, you know, whatever architecture and things like that. I'd take it back home and I'd find the vanishing points. I'd put a piece of trace over it and I'd go, am I in perspective? You know what I mean? Sometimes I wasn't, sometimes I was. Or I just look at it in the mirror and you can tell right away, right? And then I kept doing that. So it started training my eyes to see perspective. Does that make sense? Yeah. Did you ever take classes like architectural drawing classes? Did you find things like that help it, helpful? Well, I or took mechanical? a really intense, uh, at Art Center, you have to take a super intense perspective class, right? Yeah. Yeah, right. But did you, I meant like drafting classes where they, um, you know, they, they have you make an engine or something. So it's, it's much nah. more technical now. Okay. No, but you got to remember, I was also sort of, running a minor in industrial design. So I was doing things sort of similar to that. And then that sort of, there's two different ways I draw, illustrative drawing and viscom drawing. So when I'm doing viscom drawing, I'm kind of almost making a technical drawing out of my head without all that shit. Does that make sense? 
Well, yeah, sometimes it's confusing with these um, classes that people offer, whether it's um, like fast illustration or fast sketch or, um, you know, environmental. And I'm just, I, I'm not really sure what the difference in the classes, like the skill set that they're teaching. Whenever you're thinking about take class, come to me and talk to me about that. Okay. I agree with you. Sometimes it is confusing. Does that make sense? Yeah, because um, I mean, like, I understand figure to drawing, I understand life, life sketching, but some of these other ones, it, I'm not sure. Well, when you get into like environmental design, that's going to be very much an entertainment design kind of idea. Um, it's also, you know, good for other things. Um, the thing I always have to do when they go to like environmental drawing or environmental design or whatever it's called. Um, and a lot of those classes, what I have to try and do is loosen them back up because they, they, they get overly very stiff and very tight. Does that make sense? Yes. And that's partly why I started the, or I wanted to, the, the Saturday class was to, to combat that. And also to give you a, a fast drawing, a fast drawing skill set Cause I think that's key to everything. Um, if you're going to go into storyboarding, if you're going to go into anything, actually, you got to have a fast drawing skill set, Okay. Uh, and be, and, and hopefully you develop that as your language where you, you know, you're not looking at reference all the time. Does that make sense? Yes. Now I also don't agree with when I hear these systems, and they go, uh, here's a workshop and I'm gonna teach you how to draw your head. It's like, that's not how you learn how to draw your head, man. You learn how to draw your head by drawing all the time. And then it starts happening. Does that make sense? Yeah. And you know, what they're gonna do in those things, they're gonna go build a box and in perspective and then you can build it around. And that's, all, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that it seems to infect everybody's drawing to a point where their drawings just get super stiff and they're over built and there's no artistry in it. And there's no sense of, um, individuality in it. And then I go, okay, why would I hire you? If you're, if, you, if I've seen, and I've seen this, if I've looked at 40 different entertainment design portfolios and 90% of them all look the same, who's going to get separated? The 10% that don't look the same. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Thank you. you know? Unless I wanted to do run of the mill crap that I don't think is very interesting, then I might hire the other ones, you know, cause I'd go, if I look at the people who are really good, I go, they're not going to want to do this job because they're going to get bored. They want, they got ideas. You know, I got to get one of these people <clears throat> that doesn't have a lot of ideas and it's kind of a clone and I'll give them this stuff that I think is actually kind of boring and, and the stuff that's conceptual and, and it's fun and, you know, it's conceptual. I'm going to give it to the people who have some sort of identity because I want ideas. Does that make sense? Yes. You want ideas. Anyway, that's Berkey who I think is a total badass. Let's see. Wait real quick. Hang on. Where is he? There he is. That's him. <laughs> he does look like him. I don't know. You just don't think that'd be coming out of that guy's head. You know what I mean? He looks like somebody's grandfather or something, you know? By the way, this guy, see that mirror above him? Yeah. This is pretty genius, right? So this guy had his studio, I think, in the basement. I think he was in like Minnesota or someplace. He mic'd his property so he could hear the birds and everything in his studio, right? This is like in the 70s or whatever, right? And then that mirror, he has another mirror on the other side of the room. So when he's sitting there working on that painting, he can look up, see it from across the room backwards. Oh, that's smart. That's great. Without getting yeah. up. You know what yeah. I mean? So you just look up and go, oh, it's off. Okay, cool. Because normally you have to get up, look at it in a mirror and all that shit. Um, I love these guys. You know what I mean? I love all these old dudes. Okay. Sorry. Look at that. Okay, enough. All right. Sorry. I love that stuff. I can go down. I should teach history of illustration. I would love to do that. Or actually, let's just have a side group and we just talk about illustration, right? Everybody brings shit in and goes, hey, check this out, you know? But you can see how this guy's following in the footsteps of that guy, correct? But he's doing it digitally, right? And doesn't have near the talent. But this guy's very talented, by the way. I'm not saying he's not. Okay. But, okay, real quick, real quick though. When I was showing you guys the graphite thing and all those different little painting techniques and all that kind of stuff, what I'm saying is, is you know, those ideas you can pull into here, okay? And I'm not saying you have to start them traditionally, but those ideas, like if I'm going to start something 
in, in Photoshop, I might just go in and do the same thing I just did with that graphite wash and just go in and make a big wash and start pulling things in and out of it and screwing around with it and getting shapes and just big ideas. And then I'll go, oh, okay, that looks a little bit like a building. I'll start building that, you know, and all that kind of stuff. Does that make sense? Yes. And I'll start pulling stuff out of that soup. That's my favorite way to work is to pull stuff out of the soup. I love that. Okay, good. Who's this? Where is it? Lily. Yes, that's me. Uh, so yeah, I started working on it. I think I need to work on the colors. Um, sure. Obviously the faces, I need to find some that are in color. Um, or you can like, you know, do something interesting color wise with them, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Like, let's go, let's just pick something here for now. That's not gonna, let's try the blue just cause it's gonna show up more, mm -hmm. you know, and I wouldn't do this right on this layer this way, but I'm just going to do it now. Go uh, hue saturation, colorize, right? Oh, yeah. And I might pull it together as a monochromatic idea, and then I might go. Add some warm tones to the. Yeah, I'll just come up here and go, and let's, let's select him. So we just command click that image. So now we have a selection. Maybe I'll just do it this way. I want to show you guys one more thing, a filter today, because somebody mentioned this. I just want to talk about it. So don't let me forget. And it's, I wasn't planning on it, but somebody mentioned it. Mm -hmm. General brushes, again, I'm just going to get a big soft brush. I don't want it at 100. I probably want it pretty low. Mm -hmm. So let's go. I'm going to try and grab one of these warmer tones here. Then see if I can find something. My usual routine. What happened? See, I'm not on the move tool, so it wouldn't let me do it. Hang on. Let's try it now. There we go. That's not too bad right there, even. That's not bad, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not terrible. I'd probably go through all of them and see if I could find something. And then I might, you know, up here in a, maybe in some other way, grab that again. And I'm going to go back to this brush, this one. And this is going to be ham fisted, but I might come in here and just hit it up here closer to the light source a little harder. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I'm just dancing that in on another layer with my brush. And then I might go, let's do this. He's getting a little bit of white in there. So I get rid of that. Yeah. Right. And I'd also go, well, maybe I can go. And I do this a lot where I don't, I want to control it more than the, um, more than the um, glow tool will let me do. So I'm going to go, Let's get a little hotter color here. Maybe that. And I'm gonna make another layer below him. Hopefully it's not gonna, and I'm gonna fill it. So I can see on my layer right there, it's filled. You can't see it because it's behind him. Uh -huh. And then I'm gonna go filter, blur, Gaussian blur again, pull this back. And then maybe I'll just come in here with my eraser and erase it out over here. So it's just getting a little bit of that highlight up here where it's closer to the um, flame source. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then I got to go. So we're just there. Okay. That way I can control it a little bit. Um, and I don't like that color, but so let's try this. Let's go back to our hue saturation. Let's run through the color spectrum. I could even get away with the blue, even though just to separate it, because this isn't real, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Or I could go like right there. That's pretty good. 
-hmm. And now I'm getting a little bit of that light lighten him up. And I'm also taking care of another problem where I'm kind of softening that edge of his hair a little bit. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, I just did the quick selection. I didn't actually go through and do like channels or anything for his hair or anything. So I might go back and do that as well. Yeah. You probably just need to soften it up a little. doesn't look yeah. like there's a lot of it. So you probably can come in here by hand and just sort of get yeah. rid of that. There's not a lot of it. Okay. Um, and then, you know, then I go, okay, this guy back here. So now I selected, so now I could make it, and you see this a lot, by the way, and I think it's for this reason, why, the exact reason we're doing it, mm -hmm. is to try and put things into the right lighting that have um, completely different lighting. Where is he, here? I think so, yeah. So again, I'm gonna go Command U to my hue saturation, hit colorize. He's too green for some reason. Oh, that's why, hang on. Oh, he's got blue over him, that's why, right? Yeah. So let's just do that. Let's see if this, no, I got yellow here for some reason. Hang on, I thought I got this. Let's get the blue again. Let's go here, colorize. And now we're putting him back into that same lighting, right? Right. So it's a very quick way for me to go. Um, uh, let's try one other thing. So you just click, you pick the hue and then you click on colorized. Yeah, what it's gonna do is it's gonna take whatever the foreground color is and just monochromatic the whole thing that color. To really uh, functional tools. That makes sense? Yeah. So this guy, who knows? Let's say maybe I could go, I don't think this will work, but let's try it. Maybe I get some of this stuff going on. It's probably gonna be weird, hang on. Yeah, that's too weird. Mm -hmm. Let's go through, but I might go through here and just go, what does work? And it's probably just gonna be blue is my guess. Yeah. <laughs> just make a monochromatic statement. And I'd have to dial in that blue and then do the same thing with this dude. Oops. That's just the simplest way to get them all into the same environment. Mm -hmm. And it's just this little button, colorize. This guy's too saturated. I'd have to change that. You see how it's a little different? Yeah. So I'm going to try one more time to go. Where is he? There he is. I think I also darkened him up with the levels. If you see on the that's a little better you know and then you know i might give them i might do all my lighting work on him to make him really stand out mm -hmm. and then let these guys just stay a little bit more monochromatic and i might just light him a little okay yeah okay. good feeling confident yeah i'm good. liking it so far good it's fun right yeah it is <laughs> all this stuff is fun mm -hmm. The faster you can get good at it, the funner it is. Okay, so uh, Issa, is it Issa? How do I say that? Yeah, it's Issa. Okay. Yeah, I just, I didn't, I just threw all my assets together. Yeah, I saw that. Sorry. That's fine. Um, the bottom ones are kind of like a composite, but. I now just what, probably... I, what I would do, <clears throat> I think I'm, I, I, Glossed over somebody's. Yeah, I just make sure that they're big enough when you put them into your thing, right? That looks really HDR to me. Might not be. That's interesting. Yeah, I just had some questions on which background to pick. Um, you know, if it would oh, be too cool. complicated or if it went too dark to light, if that would have problems. I think it just really depends on when you start put, uh, assembling them, what works. Okay. It's really okay. just that simple. You know what I mean? And again, don't have a bunch of shapes the same size. Make sure you have a hierarchy of, of shapes. Okay. Um, you know, you really want to message. You really want to start getting good at messaging with color, I would say. Um, okay. Sort of like what we we're just talking about with that. And also, you're also, again, what you guys are doing right now is you're, you're having to use assets you're finding. That's by design because now you've got to figure out, like we just did on the last thing, like how can we solve this problem? They're all in different lighting. Well, we can make it monochromatic. There's this monochromatic idea here. Then we push the warms in there, you know, and we can start dealing with what we have instead of going, I'm going to try and take the 72 DPI image and completely rework it, which probably isn't the right solution. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So again, I'm guessing, you know, well, I know it just from my own thing. I didn't do movie posters, but I mean, a lot of times you're getting assets and you got to make them work together and they're, they're completely not working together. You know what I mean? And even, by the way, even the big companies will do that. Um, Nickelodeon was one of the worst companies I ever worked with for getting assets. 
um, I'd ask him for assets and he'd send me a picture. And I go, I need a style guide. And they send me another picture, a SpongeBob or something. I'm going, I need a style guide. I need the SpongeBob style guide. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? No, what does that mean? I'm sorry. A style guide is a, um, I've gone over style guides in here, haven't I? Mm, I don't think so. No, okay. I don't think this you is, have. This is a style guide. Hang on. Okay. So these are style guides. Okay. All these files, right? Can you guys see me? Or you guys can see it, right? Yeah. Yeah. I can see it. Okay. So what they do, okay. These were actually weren't, I mean, they were helpful to me, but I was creating product. These are more like these particular ones are a little more for different things. But what happens is, as you go in here, so this one's Alice, it's for girls, it's for summer, spring, I'm assuming, 2015, they're very specific. And what this gives me is a bunch of assets of all these different, um, just a bunch of assets to create product, right? A lot of these times they're using these for style or um, pro, uh, packaging, lifestyle stuff, print, all that kind of thing. What I was using for is I just needed any reference I could get because I was creating product. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you can get these in a lot of different ways, okay? Here's Nordic Summer. A lot of times they give you this, celebrating the success of Disney's Frozen, we're offering a new portfolio, extends the original film in the spring, summer. After all, it's not always cold in Arendelle, whatever that is. We capture the beauty of the seasons in Nordic Summer, leveraging existing storybook art focused on Anna and Elsa. We've continued Nordic influences icons from our initial guide with playful contemporary twist added a vibrant, warm summer palette that Olaf would love. Okay, the product is perfect. Program is perfect for taking the beloved characters from the film into a new season of magical phenomena. That is, and I don't think this is bad, and I always piss on marketing. This is the marketing people coming up with kind of the idea and, and, and then conveying it to whoever's using the style guide. Does that make sense? Yeah. So each one of these style guides have a, have a purpose and a point of view and a demographic, okay? So again, here's a bunch of accents or uh, assets, different ways to put together. Sometimes at the end of these, they will have examples of different ways to use all this stuff. Here's fonts they suggest. Here's, uh, you know, points of view, I guess. Uh, backgrounds. And then Sometimes, and then some information on trademarks, fonts, all that sort of thing. Sometimes I'm trying to think if I can find one in here. It's cool. Sometimes they have a, um, target audience, synopsis. That's what we just read on the other one, positioning. So there's the positioning they're going for here. Empowered female heroine filled with enchantment, excitement, blah, blah, blah. Uh, a lot of information on franchise story theme and celebration of live. So they're giving you all this business stuff around it. Does that make sense? Here's some, okay, yeah. so this is what I was looking for. They'll also give people suggestions on like this, in this case, packaging, okay? Might be lifestyle ideas. It might be multiple product. Here's how we would use this on a backpack. Here's how we use this on a child's branded toy. Here's how we'd use it on home product for adults. Here's how we'd use it on bed sheets and pillows. Here's how, we, you know, on and on and on. Does that make sense? Yes. Here's my color palette, all PMS colors. Have we talked about PMS colors in here? No, I don't think we have, no. Okay, PMS, Pantone matching system. It's really the only color matching system that really matters. Um, they are, they're specific colors that are global. So uh, tomorrow I'll, I'll show you, I have a fan book for it. Um, and it's built into all these Adobe products. Okay. We'll get into more of this, uh, later on, but if I call out like, okay, so like this is a perfect example. When I worked for the first toy company I worked for, we would do these things called tool masters and paint masters. Okay. So we, we, the sculptors would sculpt it out of clay, then into wax, then they do a, a a resin, okay, and that's going to go over to the factory in China for a tool master, right? So let's say it's this um, bell, okay, that's my resin, it, it, let's say it's just a resin collectible, okay? I'm going to have to mix these, or whoever's doing the paint masters is going to have to mix these colors exactly and paint that thing exactly like it looks ba based on those PMS colors, and then back then you would, you know, tape the chips to the thing, and, and by going, this is PMS 124, this is PMS 126, 
this is PMS, whatever, they have to match those colors. There's no discussion. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you're like guaranteeing the color of the product versus the, the only digital... way I can. Okay. Okay. The only way I can. If there's a discussion around like, Hey man, this green's like a little too desaturated. They're like, what, what does that mean? I worked with a guy who I never let him do any of this stuff. And then one time he went, for some reason, he wanted to do the paint master. And I'm like, do you know how to do a paint master? And I knew he didn't. And, uh, but I go, okay. And it was for SpongeBob. I remember this. And he keeps, paints the whole he doesn't even look at the style guide he just makes it up and he's painting color he's painting it right out of the tube he paints the whole thing like a lemon yellow and i go spongebob is a warm yellow and he goes what do you mean and i go spongebob's i go number one you need to look up the pms color but it's a warm yellow or no i said it's a cool yellow i think so he must paint it warm and he goes there's no such thing as a is a cool yellow that's what he said like that's how much he didn't know about color and i remember just going i can't believe you just said that you know what i mean and i go did you look at the chip and i pulled the chip and i go and i put it next to the thing and i go that's not even in the ballpark dude you know what i mean um so anyway and i had to do some of these the first toy job i had i had to do paint masters and i might have another thing here hang on seeing all the packaging design kind of blows my mind why is that Oh, I, I mean, because like I've seen those like tags and, and things like at the store. It's just really kind of surreal to see the style master guide behind it. I don't know. Yeah, I think it's interesting. Yeah, it is. It's very interesting. It's cool. Uh, I'm trying to find these tink heads. Let me try one more thing. I have some. I'm sorry, Mike, maybe I'm being really dense. I, I see these and I go, I understand like why the marketing would think that they are creative based on this. But what exactly do they want you to do with this? With the style guide? Yeah. It's all the assets I need to create product. So like I'm looking at Bell, right? Mm -hmm. Are they expecting you to make a different version of Bell or, or pose it differently? Or Well, that depends. But like if I want to do that, sure. These are general. Okay, there's a lot of ways I can use this. Number one, I don't want to redraw Bell. I'm not a character artist. I hate doing that. Now, if I'm working, if it, let's say I was working, okay, I'm gonna give this context. If I'm working at the, I, I was a creative director at Disney stores, okay? Or a toy design director. Um, if I go, okay, I'm gonna use this color information no matter what, because that's just set in stone. If I wanna repose Belle, then I'm gonna go to one of the character artists, because that's what they do. And I'm gonna go, hey, I want Belle holding a martini and waving the other arm like this, and she's half crocked, okay? I know it's ridiculous, but, um, and the character artist does that, okay? Because that's all they do. They just draw the characters on model exactly how you want them. Does that make sense? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Now that is a very specific skill set, okay? Because I had to do it a couple times. I just did it to help out. I don't know if I've ever said this before. Like my boss came in one time at Imagineer and he goes, we don't have any animators right now. Can you just draw the characters for this thing, whatever it was? And I go, I fucking hate drawing those characters. And he goes, I know, but you know. I go, okay, fine. And then I hate drawing them, right? But it's, and, and it's funny because people would go, well, you can draw your ass off. Why is that a big deal? And I go, because it's a different thing. Does that make sense? There's yeah. all these parameters around the way I'm drawing and all that. Now, usually if you go in as a character artist at Disney, they run you through a training program. And then you got to really kind of learn that skill. It's even, no matter how good you draw, you got to learn. And then, by the way, the other side of that is that I knew a lot of character artists. And when I look at their sketchbooks, their sketches weren't that good. They were just good at this, okay? Then there's people who are great at both, okay? Uh, Shakay, the one I was just talking about, she was great at both. She could just draw the shit out of those characters, come up with everything. She was just great, okay? I would have to sit down and, and train myself just on that, which I had no interest in. I looked at it as a grunt job. It's not, but I didn't want to do that. I like being the conceptual driver. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, so this is going to give me all the color information. If I want to change her, I either got to change. And, and the other reason I don't want to change her is that when I change her, I, no matter where I am in the pipeline, somebody's got to approve that pose. Okay, it doesn't matter if I'm the creative director or whatever, there's the head of character that's going to go, mm -mm, her eyes are a little off. You know, it's going to be that kind of shit, right? And I don't want to do that. Okay, so here's all that. Um, there's different versions of these things. It's Mrs. Potts. Now, sometimes, oh, this is a completely different watercolor style of art. So a lot of times you're introducing a lot of different types of styles of art. If you notice, they're not exactly just based. I mean, they're based on the movie, but they're pushed. This is very rendered, all that kind of stuff. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
And then I was using this because I was creating hard goods product, toy blind product. So this stuff, I couldn't just take it verbatim, but it gave me a lot of color information. Just gave me a lot of stuff to look at. Um, I was creating new product in a new Disney universe that didn't exist. So I had to like pull from these things and start cobbling together a new, I had one product where Mickey or uh, Minnie and Tink lived in a tree house together. So none of this completely applies to this. I have to go, well, what does that look like? You know? And then we came up with the idea of going, well, they're two hip young girls and they're living in this, their tree house is cool, you know? Um, and then you pull little elements and you redesign a new world, a little bit of a new world, right? Yeah. Um, let's see. All right, one. I get it now. Thank you. Uh, here's, I like this one. If you notice, a lot of these are vector, by the way. So again, here's a different style being pushed from the movie, but it's pushed into a different style. Does that make sense? Yes. Point of view. Look, same thing. Synopsis, target audience, six to eight positioning. And the reason this is very important, you guys, when you go and you work on something, okay, and almost anything, it's a commercial endeavor, but especially if it's entertainment or anything, toys, film, uh, whatever, um, you have to work within all these parameters, okay? So you're going to be working within budget. You're going to be working within uh, man, wh wh however it's going to be made. In my case, it was manufactured. Um, they're going to want you to hit that target audience, that demographic. Um, and then when it comes back, because this is what will happen, it'll come back to the factory and they go, you're five cents over on your pricing. And then you got to be able to go, how do I knock five cents off of this thing? You know what I mean? And dial it in. And then you also got to be, if they come back from the factory and they go, hey, this is going to take a three-part mold. You got to be able to go, shit, I need to have a two-part mold. I can't afford a three-part mold. How do I how do I do that? You know what I mean? You got to know all that stuff, okay? There's parameters around any, any framework you work within. Graphic design is printing or online. Um, you know, all that stuff. Does that make sense? And printing is complex. Go take a print technology class. You're crazy if you don't. I think anybody should because I think that place is a playground. Anyway, so here's this same idea, right? Look, they give you patterns, they give you little vignettes, they give you more vignettes, background sometimes, frames, icons, poses. And now I'm loaded. Oh, I like this one. It's got backgrounds. Yeah, I love this background right here. Isn't that cool? It's really pretty. It kind of reminds me a little bit of like, was it Ivelyn Earl? Or um, oh, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. A little, like Absolutely. the shapes. Yeah. yeah. That guy's cast a shadow over Disney forever. You know what I mean? For good reason. He's a I bit. love his stuff. You ever seen the originals? Uh, not in person, but he draws a lot of landscapes up in Northern California. I've looked through all of his paintings online and they're just Damn, so when you go see beautiful. him in person... They are like mind-blowingly technically like executed. Like they don't look, it's weird. They look almost like they were computer generated or something. Yeah. They're like smooth gradients going down yeah, like the hills. Just like, everything's like perfect. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's super weird. Like there's not that many people do that where you're looking at it going, it's hard to see the mark of the hand on there. It's just so perfect. Sid Mead does that too. Where you look at it and go, that just doesn't look real. Like you're looking at his things and going, is that a computer printout or is that the actual gouache painting and it's the actual gouache painting anyway so there's a bunch of them in here um of these kind of things does that make sense yes and we understand what that all means right yes so this is what you'll get whenever you work on a project and by the way i'll try and find some other ones i have these for starbucks i have these for like the first hulk movie i have them for et i have them for because they re-released et i have them for like all these different things okay and it's kind of, and then, and then this, if you were going to do the character drawings, then you'd have model sheets. Okay. Which would tell you, break down the, the structure of the, uh, the character, what they do, what they can't do. Bell, when her hair is disheveled, there's three hairs, right? When it's not, it's a certain way. You know, they tell you all this stuff. It's all very structured. Okay. That's why I hated drawing the characters. I like doing the conceptual stuff because I'm free. If I draw the characters, I'm very locked into those parameters right which just isn't fun to me okay the questions on that but that's what you'll get you'll get it from starbucks and what starbucks will have is the same thing 
Ah, warm, friendly. You're looking out the window in the winter. This might be for winter, the synopsis. Uh, having a hot cup of uh, cocoa and da 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 and it's the sky's blue and they paint this scene what they're trying to hit like what their conceptual idea was and i hate it when if i get it and i get this all the time with designers are like oh it's stupid man but it's like how is that stupid that's the structure that you need to build your design on you need structure does that make sense and they don't have spaceships and characters and all that crap so they've got to create a scenario a feeling does that make sense and then in those style guides, it'll tell you exactly how they can use their logo. You can use this pattern with this, but you can't use this pattern with that. And it'll tell you all that stuff. Okay. And I love that because it gives me structure in it and, and allows me to hit my deadlines faster. Does that make sense? Okay. Because some people go, I want to make everything from scratch. That's like, I don't want to make Starbucks crap from scratch. I want to get Starbucks off my plate. You know what I mean? I want that job off my plate. That's it. I want to get paid. You know what I mean? And that's the other thing. I want to get paid. Okay. Now I was always working in house. That really wasn't an issue, but you know, those jobs I looked at and I go, that's to me, that's fun and everything, but it's over here is a really fun, creative job. I want to put my brain into that. You know what I mean? I don't want to put my brain into Starbucks. Starbucks is what it is. And Starbucks sort of sets their idea up. Right. And by the way, it's a cult over there. Like those people really buy into the whole Starbucks thing. Okay, hang on. I think I'm, okay, so wait, I missed one, right? Did I miss one? Who like was doing someone's the, poster? No, yeah, who was doing the thing underwater? That was me. I uploaded my working thing and then I, I saw, I saw him. the only one and so I deleted it. Oh. <laughs> so yeah, that was that Okay, was I saw the picture of the band, right? Um I saw yeah, that. I, I've been working. I could upload it now. And that's fine. Um, the first thing you got to do is get them separated, obviously, right? Yeah, I, I just got them separated this morning. And okay. I couldn't use the actual band because all of the photos were terrible. Yeah, so that happens. I just pulled uh, Greta Van Fleet off of the internet. That's fine. That's, that's my totally band. fine. Yeah, that's fine. Just pull all your the assets and go over, over is, in the morning. How do I make yep. it look like your feet are in the sand? Uh, the same way we talked about when we were talking about uh, the cowboy standing in the um, uh, grass. Yeah. Well, grass, Some of it's going to creep up like around the feet. Piles, right? Huh? Sand is more like in piles. Yeah. So, you're just, it's just going to cover the shoes a little bit. That's it. Okay. That's it. So, so not completely buried. No. Um, no, not probably not. Especially okay. not. Look, there's a dance here when you're going to put a band underwater. There's a dance with like, well, in reality, it would do this. Like, I know, but in, this isn't reality. Number one, they wouldn't be standing there. They'd be floating. You know, there's right. a lot of things. You got to just create, you're creating an image. And I'm going to I'm gonna pull a little bit from reality and a lot from surreality. Does that make sense? Yeah. So there's a dance there. Because okay. you could get, people get really, sometimes students especially, get really hung up on like reality when they're creating something that's, and I understand that you're going to pull from reality, like lighting and all this kind of things. But it's like, it's a band underwater. That's completely impossible anyway. You know what right. I mean? So I'm going to sort of pull a little from reality and a little from fantasy, right? Yeah. So here's our guy. I don't think he's a real estate agent, but let's crop this. We don't need all this. You guys can still see my screen, right? Yes. So if you go to here, to filter, liquefy, Gives you a separate window here. And what's interesting is you look over here, it says like eye size, right? See how his eye gets bigger or smaller? You guys see that? <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, I'm laughing eye. at it. So let's go to his right eye. And then it's like eye height. And then it's got all these weird, like there's the eye width. <laughs> and then it has eye tilt. We can tilt it. And it just knows this stuff from the content. It knows how to read a face. There's the nose, nose height, nose width. So let's make him real pinched nose. And then his smile. See that? The smile one can actually come in handy though. If you're, um, if somebody looks really sour, you might just be able to just subtly give them a little, a little 
just subtly give them a little more friendliness. Does that make sense? Yeah. So here's lower lip. Here's mouth width, right? And let's go brush tool options, da, 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 all this. And this is face aware liquify. Okay, does that make sense? I don't yeah. Know ears. Let's see what this, yeah. So I can play around with it all like that now. And I'll show you some other stuff to do with this, but um, you can also just come in here and go filter, liquify. And it has these tools over here. And again, here's a smudge tool, right? So I can come in here and I can just sort of, you know, this comes really handy. I'll show you some stuff with water reflections and things. Um, you know, and I could hand dick around with it, right? If I want to really insult them. And then this one, I forgot what this one is. Like this one is a swirl filter. Right? This one uh, expands it, I think. Or no, it's, I think you can go option. Yeah. If I hold option, it goes bigger. If I don't, it goes smaller. Let's make them beady eyed. Uh, this one, I forgot what this one does. Okay, that just bulbs out the whole thing. You know, I can go smaller and focus on an area, right? So there's just a variety of tools. I don't know what this one does. I never use that. Um, you know, this moves it around and zooms, right? But there's this variety of tools in here. This, this, these, this tool set will come in handy for other things later on. Does that make sense? But somebody was talking about changing the eyes and things like that. Now, if I was going to change the pupils, I'd probably separate them and then move them where I want. You know, but I might come into a liquify thing and go, well, if I move the eye up, the eyebrows can come up a little bit. Maybe I'll come with the liquify and just barely move it, right? If I'm not making big moves with it, it can actually be pretty um, effective, right? I'm, I'm sorry, be... Mike, was this a plug-in or was this a separate mm -hmm. program? No, it's just under a uh, filter. Oh, okay. Thank you. It's um, filter, liquify, right? So there's different things here. There's lens correction, which is another filter. I use it here because I like to vignette things. So I can come here, go to custom. We'll get into this thing later, so don't worry about it. You know, and I can vignette things and I can change the lens and all that kind of stuff on it. Uh, I usually just use it for vignette, okay? Um, but anyway, that's just a liquify filter. I'll show you some more practical things with it later on. Actually, there's some practicality. I, I'm pushing everything to ridiculousness, but if you use those things very subtly, they can be very useful. Does that make sense? And it could even be that, like correcting lens distortion or something like that, where you go, that guy just doesn't look right, you know? And a lot of times people look at photos and they go, well, it's a photo. And you go, I know, but that could be lens distortion. Like there might be a little lens distortion going on there. It's making his, his nose is too close to the camera or something. I got to reduce it just a hair. It's like little things like that, you know? And the more of that stuff you can train your eye to see, because usually when you're first starting this stuff, you know, you don't see it, you know, and after a while you, you need to learn to see that stuff. You know, you, your eyes need to get super fine tuned where you're, um, you know, where you're seeing that kind of thing, right? And, and, and also if you're working from reference where you know, like I need to make those hands a little bigger if you're drawing or something, or I'm gonna change that hand pose to that instead of that, you know, just because I think it looks cooler like that. And I, the example I always use, if you look at comic books when they're drawing, if, you know, you usually run like this or whatever, right? But they're always running like this with this hand like this and this hand doing something crazy because it looks cool. You know what I mean? You don't run like that. You don't run with your hands like that. You run with your hands like that usually, right? But, you know, they always have it coming towards you with this hand doing something cool. They always do this all the time in comic books. You guys ever notice that? That hand pose is in like, every comic book you look at it's weird i don't know if they do that as a thing i mean it looks cool and all that but now it's become such a visual cliche it's kind of weird all right questions any questions that was a rabbit hole today yeah yeah that was a fun rabbit hole no questions i love rabbit holes as long as they stay in the context of what we're doing um, and I think they do. And, and by the way, I like that. Okay. Cause almost anything you're going to talk about painting or design or any of that stuff, it's going to relate to Photoshop. Okay. Um, I mean, I'll only go that far down it, but I think, I think to me, if you're going for, let's say that painterly thing or whatever, and like, um, 
Casey was talking about where you're going, well, I saw this technique or whatever done. And I go, okay, that's one point of view, but that's the point of view of somebody who's not a painter. I, my point of view is from a, a, a painting perspective. Does that make sense? Design and painting perspective, because you're actually combining those two things. Um, and that's just how I approach it. Okay. And then I'm going back to Berkey to show you where that other stuff is coming from. That's super digital, right? Does that make sense? And by the way, that one, when I was showing you the concept design, one of that city, this one, I didn't used to like his stuff. It used to be too stiff to me. And he it very much looked like an industrial designer, which I think he is. Uh, and, and he's loosened up over the years where the, his stuff's gotten much more painterly like this. That's much more painterly. Okay. And it's cool. Right. Anyway, there it is. Um, I want to see work in progress tomorrow, just like we have been. I put it up. I put up the assignment for Monday. Right. Um, it's raining. Uh, I'm in the mountains. Um, shit, my girlfriend's a big bomb. She has an event today. Um, I got it for Monday. Um, nothing is ever due when we're in this mode. But if I were you, I'd be showing process. Don't wait till the night before and then try and throw it all together. And I've never seen it. And it's like, okay, that's not good. You know what I mean? And I want you guys to think about these things and putting these things into one nicely cohesive designed thing does that make sense just like we talked about earlier we're taking the color and the lighting and using monochromaticism that kind of thing to make it all work together you want to think like that you got to make these things work together from disparate elements yeah yes and then also can you please post your um your textures and your smudge brushes too after class and then we can i'll look at them on monday i want to shoot for a monday finish for sure and I might just go, okay, fix these up and we'll submit them tomorrow because next week I want to get on to, um, I definitely want to get on to uh, brushes, okay? Because I want to start working into tools now where it's very much image creation as opposed to image, uh, you know, pulling from images. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Or the tools of, you know, creating things. Um, I think that's it. Yeah? Right on. Oh, wait a minute. Let me double check. Let me take one more screen grab. Okay, guys. I'll see you in the morning. Thank you. Okay. okay thank you. Thank you. I'm going to go eat curry chicken.